One of the things I really, really love about Paris is their sense of aesthetics. It is so important to this city. Also other cities in France, but Paris just takes it to the next level. Ooh, they like everything aesthetic. If they're finally gonna do a proper bike lane, they do it with the best stones and the best asphalt. Maybe the connectivity and all that, that sucks. But man, they love aesthetics. I am from a design country. My kids have design in the third grade in Danish schools, right? So this is incredibly important. So you come here and you go, oh, I kind of get that part of it. I really identify with this passion for making everything look really nice. But then when you dig deeper into it, you're even more amazed. The design guide for the city of Paris about all the different elements on the urban landscape, absolutely every detail. It's like a 200 page document. I was looking at it last night at a wine bar and man, it was, you know, it was my design porn hub. It was like, what? Oh my God, all the measurements, every single detail. And the greatest thing about it is that so many of these elements, historically, um, they have names. It's like Ikea <laughs> in Paris, basically. They give names to stuff. At the background here, it's Colomb Maurice. It literally has a name. That old advertising you know, column, that's called a Morris. He got names for all these other different things as well, and it just makes it so so human in a way, right? And so, so personal. They have a lot of new elements in Paris with the new generation of urbanism and uh, urban development here. Some of them have names, but it's really the older stuff that has these, these, these names. I can't remember them all uh, because it's, it's like a new thing, a new exciting thing for me. But you have like these round traffic islands with a sort of traffic light in the middle of the street. That's a, a bon d'avo. I got a list here. There's a bank d'avio. There is uh, Fontaine Wallace. You got your Poubelle Bagatelle. That just sounds like a really cool porn name for somebody, you know? You have your Poubelle Sibel, you know? They have all of these different names and it just is, it never gets old. Scrolling through this amazingly long design manual. And bikes ringing their bells. It's so amazing to do a deep dive into all of these quirky little names and the history of all the different elements, certain sections of street, like a type of street. It's called a Lincoln. I don't know what he did <laughs> to uh, get a street type named after him, but man, it is so cool. That is something about Paris that just is absolutely fascinating. And uh, as a design guy, big fan. So this is a little addendum to the whole design thing that we're in the middle of at the moment. I have been really looking at this and learning more things about it. The design of the Vélib bike share system when it first came out, for talking about the aesthetics that Paris insists upon and loves so much, the design of that bike was just kind of brown and the bike racks, they were kind of gray. It was a design choice so that it didn't seem as invasive on the urban landscape. I really like the color of the very first generation of the bike share bikes and now you have the bright green and the bright blue so there are some kind of weird things about Paris where they uh, they have this incredible passion and focus for the aesthetics and then they do some stuff like that and all the the other bike share bikes the the private companies you know gaudy colors <laughs> in any city in the world and this is also in Denmark we would think this way it's kind of an odd thing that they allow sort of these bombastic colors into the city. Down on Concord, for example, in other areas, there is on the books that all the lampposts have to be identical. And then citizens will notice that that one lamppost is not the identical, it's a different design than the other one. And there will be emails written, <laughs> letters written, complaining about this aesthetic. So it's not just the, the politicians in Paris, it's really deeply ingrained on the people of Paris, a very stylish population, really feeling like they have ownership of the public space. And when you're gonna complain about one errant lamppost design, then you know that, okay, they might be kind of irritating these people, but you know that they actually have uh, an opinion about it. It's not completely 100% aesthetic. There are these quirky things that kind of fall outside um, the lines. Many years ago, I was working in Sao Paulo in Brazil, and this was a visionary political decision they made there, banning all outdoor advertising as you know, visual pollution. 
It was really odd walking around that city and not seeing all of the billboards and the crazy graphic design, you know, advertising for all of these different products, right? Wow, I hadn't seen that anywhere before. And that brings me to Paris. So much focus on the aesthetic and the people and the, you know, this rebel capital and this is our city and we're gonna make it better for the citizens. And you have stuff like this, man. You see that over there? On top of that building, I think it's scaffolding. And it is just a huge Louis Vuitton advert. And whenever big buildings are renovated here, Paris just sells their soul to the devil and huge companies can buy the entire building, wrap it in scaffolding and advertise the hell out of their products on it. And I just find that to be ironic compared to what Paris otherwise feels about. They're just selling any available advertising space to anybody who has the money. I've seen a square in front of Saint Lazare train station a couple of years ago, bought by some company. The entire square was like an advertisement, and I just have to go into the train station. It's really kind of weird, right? So no city's perfect, and if these are the big problems that I'm finding in the design aesthetics of Paris, they're probably not that bad compared to other cities. But still, weird stuff, man. Yeah, hi, me again. So uh, in the context of design and aesthetics and all the beautiful things that Paris is trying to be about. Here's an interesting design challenge for somebody out there. This is a public market, not today. And public markets are amazing, a big part of community life. They are oh, so fantastic in a city, large or small. But when the market's not there, what they do in many parts of Paris is they just leave all of this infrastructure up, right? And I'm sorry, it just doesn't look very good. It's really horrible looking. It's a pedestrian hazard, right? Strong wind comes along, a storm, it's gonna fall over, you know. Uh, it takes up a lot of public space, which could be used for something else when the market's not there. Markets are awesome, but when they're not there. Hmm. So there's the design challenge. Somebody should be commissioning some kind of solution. Beautiful design solution, lightweight, inexpensive, that can be replicated in markets all over Paris, all over France, well, Europe. Geez, that is a really interesting design challenge, finding that solution that will just be transferable everywhere there's a market. You simply can't get around the bollards of Paris, what, like, you know, hundreds of thousands of them everywhere. And I have seen some really cool examples of how people have been trying to hack them. They're there, you can't get rid of them, but outside a cafe or a shop, I see people putting planters on them, I see them uh, making a little bar so you can rest your beer or your coffee on them. And that just makes me think, what else can we do with these ballers? There's another design competition for Paris, man. In densely populated streets where there's a lot of cafes and shops, there could be other uses for these. We can add stuff to them, make some universal design that fits and people can transform them into useful urban furniture. I don't know, start the competition? That would be a fun one. Of course, Paris is a feast for the eyes architecturally and if people here are so passionate about aesthetics, it must be really hard to live here for a lot of people because, yeah, here along the river, you have kind of the same typology of architecture. You go out to other neighborhoods, you can just see what happened in all the different decades throughout the last 100 years. You know, new thinking in the 50s and 60s, social housing and, and crazy designs, and, and, and now it continues today with modern architecture. It is really a mix. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. There's no city in the world that's going to be completely identical in its typology, except for maybe a small European capital somewhere. But I'm just thinking about the people who just go, oh, everything's so perfect and aesthetic and with Paris and look, I'm dressed so well. And then you have to walk down a street and see weird architecture around the corner, see something else completely bizarre. It just must be a challenge for the aesthetic-minded people of Paris.